I get a lot of detractors talking about Isis's aesthetic look of golden skin and chestnut brown hair. And I have this to say to them. Malcolm X was a light-skinned black man with red hair. Is he not black enough to be considered to be a hero? Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. I got a comment from someone at Concrete Comics regarding the aesthetic look of Isis. Now, according to them, because the Isis character has golden skin and chestnut colored hair, they believe that I am some sort of hypocrite for criticizing them regarding their recent character, Luna. Now, the Luna character in Concrete Comics is a black woman with long blonde hair, and she's a character who is involved in a relationship with a white man. Now, according to Concred Comics, I shouldn't be talking about the Luna character because of the appearance of Isis aesthetically. However, I have reasons for the Isis character having that aesthetic look, and none of them relate to trying to make the character appear to be white or even are connected to any sort of narrative as related to so-called trying to make the character a white-looking character. Now, this is a straw man argument I have dealt with in the past and was even the inspiration for an Isis series book that I did called House of Isis. And it's an argument that I can easily go out here and deconstruct because as I've done my research for the Isis character way back in 1998, I can tell you that everything as related to the Isis character comes from ancient Egyptian and Nubian mythology and also comes from black American history. Now, as related to the aesthetic look of the Isis character, the aesthetic look of the Isis character is directly connected to the mythology as related to the legend of Isis, Osiris, and Set, and is meant to be a continuation of that lore. Now, the Isis character is the, the Nubian daughter of Osiris and was sired through a sister wife in Nubia after the fall of ancient Egypt and it's just it collapsing and becoming a part of the Roman Empire. And as the Isis's father Osiris was coming back to life, he was looking at the state of the nation that he was the spiritual pharaoh of, seeing it being conquered, and he wanted to go out here and sire a third son to go out here and be the sword of Nubia, who would go out here and drive the Romans out of Egypt and then bring the two nations together as one under the gods. And what, the reason why he wanted to sire a, this child with a sister wife is that because he wanted the child to be raised in Nubian culture, which was still connected to the old Heliopolitan traditions and connected to the old Heliopolitan culture. And he wanted this child to go out here and be a part of that culture so that they could go out here and rebuild the, the brother nation of Egypt, also known as Kemet, and bring both nations together again as one under the gods. This was the destiny that Osiris wanted to plan for his third son, and he wanted to make sure that this son would be someone who could go out here and be that general that would drive those armies. However, the Most High had different plans for his child, and instead of him having a son by the sister wife, what happened was he wound up having a daughter instead, and because he had a daughter, there was no actual way for him to go out here and create, fulfill the destiny he had for that child. Now, the Isis character's aesthetics, again, come from the legend of Isis, Osiris, and Set, and in the hieroglyphs, gods were oftentimes depicted as having golden skin. Moreover, 
the ancient Egyptians and the Nubians oftentimes saw gods as beings with skin of gold. And that's why the Isis character has golden skin that people misinterpret as light-skinned, but her skin is gold because it represents, one, Isis's connection to her f father Osiris, the, the pharaoh of New Halopolis, and it also connects her to the her Nubian heritage as a Nubian goddess. Moreover, Isis's chestnut hair comes from Seth, who is Osiris's brother, and in the mythology, Seth has always been depicted as a god who had red hair. So I always saw it as a genetic trait that would be passed on from the uncle to the daughter because the seed of Osiris, again, is connected to his brother and a genetic trait of the red hair would be a part of that. So that's why Isis has chestnut colored hair it ha she has that hair because it is a part of her bloodline, and because it's a part of her bloodline, she has this chestnut, which is reddish-brown hair, that sets her off from most of the other characters in the Isis continuity. And again, I also did this because the character's chestnut-colored hair gives her a pop of color that makes her stand out, because if I'm going out here and I'm coloring Queen Isis, who is has black hair, and Esteem, who has black hair, and Horus, and who has black hair. She's she's gonna just blend into the background. But if she has the chestnut colored hair, that's the first thing that's gonna draw your attention to her face, and it's gonna make the character pop, as related to the aesthetic line of bringing a character's. Um, you up to their face because with Isis's white costume she has the kilt on that draws your, your body up to her torso to the um, pendant um, pendant that she's wearing and then up to your face where you, the red hair brings you to her face that is all about aesthetic design and it's all about making the character stand out and be a distinct character. So a lot of people want to get into the light skin, dark skin argument. Again, a straw man argument because they don't really like the idea of a black man going out here and creating a black heroine. And they want to find talking points to go out here and try to go out here and try to say that I'm some sort of colorist or I'm sort some sort of have some sort of preference as related to Isis's um, skin tone, but everything that I make as related to Isis was related to N Nubian mythology, Egyptian mythology, and that is core to her visual design. Because when I designed this character again, I did years of research back in 1998, and even further on, even after I wrote the first Isis book in 1999, and I made every effort to make sure that everything fit organically into the mythology of Egypt and Nubia to make an aesthetic design that I would believe would be visually appealing to viewers and really stand out and show that the character is a descendant of the gods who, when I was working on this whole um, Isis concept, I was imagining black actors in the roles. I imagined originally Halle Berry as Isis. I imagined Samuel L. Jackson as Osiris. I imagined Angela Bassett as Queen Isis and Sally Richardson as Esteem. That was the original way I imagined the original Isis cast. And as I've gone on with the Isis character, I wanted to again go out here and show how she is a descendant of the old, old Heli Heliopolitan gods and how as a part of New Helopolis, because after the Heliopolitan Wars destroyed all the, the kingdom of Helopolis, it was rebuilt into New Helopolis, which was my kind of take on Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's new gods. I wanted the, the, this to be a new Heliopolitan culture, and that's where Isis fits into the whole mythology. It's kind of similar to what happens with Monster High. Again, they're descendants of the original monsters, but Isis is a descendant of the original gods, and her goal was to originally supposed to fulfill a destiny, a des destiny that she wasn't able to fulfill because she was born female one, 
two, she was had her destiny derailed by a jealous Princess Amari, who was betrothed to Prince Amon, who was the prince of Nubia. And as Isis was out here, she was a tomboy who was used to hanging out with guys because, again, originally Osiris wanted a son. So the character, while she was a girl, was a bit of a tomboy who liked hanging out with guys and doing guy stuff, but was raised to be a part of the kingdom by the king and the prince and was a very respectful young lady who, again, while she was a bit of a tomboy, was always respectful. And when... Prince Amon was betrothed to go out here and marry Amari. This is where the character's destiny basically got derailed because Amari was extremely jealous of Isis and because Amari was jealous of the attention Isis was receiving from the prince and the royal guardsmen. This is what got her extremely upset to the point where she wanted to kill Isis. And all of this is chronicled in the first modern Isis series book that I published in 2012, Amari's Revenge. And this is what led to the Isis character winding up being kicked out of Nubia. And she basically surrendered to the prince and submitted to the prince and, and leaving Nubia in order to try to have peace in the kingdom. And that was core to the character as related to why she wound up leaving Nubia and never fulfilling her destiny. Now, as the Isis character left Nubia, she traveled for centuries as a traitor until she eventually wound up crashing on the shores of Japan. And when she crashed on the shores of Japan, she wound up running into a black Japanese woman um, Nishira Takuda, and Nishira Takuda taught Isis everything about the martial arts and taught her the ways of the samurai. Now, as she learned more and more about the martial arts as a teacher in Asia and learning as a student, she learned more and more about the martial arts and learned more about Japanese culture. And the reason why I chose Japanese culture for her to be a part of was because Japan had not been infected with white supremacy. Japan basically was the first country to ever beat white supremacy. Japan was the country that basically told white, white people that their products were inferior, they were less than them, and went out here and kept the Europeans from colonizing their nations for over 800 years. So that's a reason why ISIS has a deep connection to Japan, because Japan was a nation that basically beat white supremacy. However, in about 1853, the ISIS character wound up in on the road to America because she ran into some travelers there from America and they told her about black people in America and told that her that these people, these that the Negroes who had hair like hers and skin like hers were a part of the nation and Isis wanted to go out here and help those people after she heard about them from these American traders. And this is where the Isis character came to America and she was looking to go out here and again help her people as a free woman of color. Unfortunately, as Isis came to America, she wound up becoming indoctrinated into the system of white supremacy. And as she got indoctrinated into the system of white supremacy by living in America, this had an impact on her psychologically, and it had an impact on her psychologically because she was in a nation for the first time where she wasn't seen as a person. No, she was seen as a second-class citizen, and she was taught basically every day and told every day in that culture that she was inferior, she was less than, and because there was no way for her to go out here and escape that culture, what she it became a part of her psyche, and it really affected her to the point where she started to feel like she had low self-worth and no ability to take agency and power, even though she had been long-lived and, again, still didn't know that she was a goddess, she didn't know how to take her power. And at, because she thought she was just a long-lived human, she began to, again, feel all of the impact of white supremacy on her mind. 
And as she felt the impact of white supremacy on her mind, what happened was is she started to believe a lot of the ideas that white supremacists told black people about themselves. And this is what made her feel extremely powerless. And again, this is I wanted to show the psychological impact of white supremacy on a black woman's mind. Because uh, in a lot of comics that I read, like Icon, he, they just barely scratched the surface as related to Augustus Freeman and the oppression he encountered. They really didn't want dig deep as related to the psychological impact of white supremacy on the Icon character. But with Isis, I was going to go deep into that psychology. And I did that in the 15th chapter of 2002's Isis. In the, in the 15th chapter, I talk about how white supremacy basically impacted her and how she was taught, oh, you have to accept everything that these white people say as truth, even if it's a lie, and how this, again, was breaking her down mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as she tried to go out here and live her life. Because, again, Isis didn't have acknowledgement of her being a goddess, didn't understand her power as a goddess, and because she felt powerless as a human, it just had a deep psychological impact on her mind. Now, she did go on and marry a man, Joe Robinson, and as she married Joe Robinson, she was looking to build a life and still looking to help black people. She was living in Boston, and then after the Civil War, moved down to North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, it's been a while since I've read the books, but she moved down South to go out here and be a teacher. And she wanted to be a teacher to try to share knowledge with black people. And as she went out here looking to share knowledge with black people, even though she was still struggling with the psychological impact of white supremacy, she was still looking to help people until she eventually wound up getting pregnant and having her first child. Now, soon after Isis had her first child, this is where she wound up having the greatest tragedy of her life. And that tragedy was she was she wound up seeing her husband die as he was being lynched after the Klan burned down their home. And after the Klan burned down her, her home and murdered her, her baby son, this is where Isis, who was just distraught with grief, finally gave in to her goddess power and used that goddess power to go out here and murder all of the clansmen who murdered her family. So this is where the Isis character is has the tragic trauma as related to white supremacy. White supremacy basically just just, just made it where she was so spiritually broken that when she when she lost everything, this is when she gave into her goddess power. And this is one of the core components of a major fear that the character has as related to taking her power as a black woman. It's a major component because all of that trauma that was um, a part of white supremacy, just putting a psychological, doing psychological damage to the character, led to the character feeling powerless. And she, the only way she took power is when she basically lost all semblance of her humanity. And the great irony of the ISIS character in that tragedy is that it, she finally fulfilled her destiny as being the Nubian sword, but she was a Nubian sword that was turned into a weapon of just extreme violence and was just so filled with hate that she could not even um, be capable of having any part of society at that point. And that's when the Elder Gods decided to take the Isis character and put her on trial and banish her to the Island of Solitude because they saw her as a danger to herself because with this hatred of white people, she would have gone out here and started hating everyone overall because, again, the whole thing with these white supremacists is they are, again, demons in and of themselves and they didn't want and the elder gods didn't want to see Isis being transformed into a hate-filled person who was hating like demons so they banished her to the island of solitude where they could go out here and work things out and this is where Isis runs into her sister Esteem who she doesn't know is her sister she's her adopted sister so she Esteem wants to get her off the island but to, but she's basically doing this as a ruse to get her to be taken to hell so that she can go out here and become a lady 
in Lucifer's Legion. So all of this relates to the Isis character being connected to black history because when I did this, created this character, I wanted her to have a direct connection from Egypt and Nubia to black American history. And with the character being one, an immortal character, I could easily connect the character to um, ancient Egyptian history, Nubian history, and Japanese and black history showing that the character has learned from multiple cultures, but Isis has a deep love and connection to black people, and she has that love because she relates to the struggles of black people, because even though she was a Nubian, she was a woman without a nation, because the nation of Nubia fell, so she relates to black people because she sees them as a people without a nation, and because she sees them as people without a nation, she wants to go out here and help those people. Now, even after Isis had all of her struggles as related to the Island of Solitude and managed to spend, she spent a decade just trying to, again, detoxify from white supremacy. She basically had to spend an entire decade detoxifying from white supremacy before she decided to return to America as Andrea Thomas Robinson. So the Isis character, after she returned to America, came up with a different plan and was decreed by Ra not to get involved with anything political too heavily. And as she was out here in her, what I call the social crusader days, she created a new strategy to help black people by going out here as Professor Andrea Thomas Robinson, who was a part of Spelman College as a professor and also a entrepreneur. She worked ISIS worked behind the scenes working with to build and develop black owned businesses in a town built on Indian land and this town of Oneonta County in New York was a place that she designed with the help of the um, chief's daughter Alma Travis to go out here and be a place for black people and Native American people to be a place where they could go out here and have a town that a black town that could not be destroyed because it was not on American soil because Native American um, reservations are not considered under the jurisdiction of the United States. So the ISIS character helped them build a town because many reservations were just places known for death, but with Andrea Thomas Robinson's help and Earl Travis's help, Alma's husband, they were able to go out here and build a town that could not be destroyed because it was not under the jurisdiction of the United States and it was a place that nobody really wanted to go because Native American um, reservations were again were considered hell holes but the whole thing is with black people building it up they could have a place for both of them to be and she helped build that town and she also went out here and helped build a sorority known as the Thetas and the Theta sorority was all about teaching women a way to match the old African proverb, the a race can rise no higher than the moral position of its women, and as the woman goes, so goes the race. So Isis created a sorority for black women to learn about core values that were connected to the old African proverb, and as she was creating that sorority, she went out here and taught many women, including Doc Flowers and 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 the and one of her descendants, Colleen Anderson. So the Isis character, she has been a, a major contributor to the black community in the background, learning from her mistakes as related to when she got indoctrinated into white supremacy. So this is all a part of what I put into Isis books. I um, put a lot of black history Egyptian history, Nubian history, and even some parts of black Japanese history because yes, there were black Japanese back in the ancient days of Japan, like are talked about in the legend of Yasuke. People don't want to talk about the black Japanese because there are dark skinned Japanese people, but I go over all of this in the, with the Isis character showing how she's a part of black history. So when people go out here and look at the aesthetics of the character, they don't understand the substance of the character and her connections to black history because a lot of black people, they go out here and think, oh, because a character has a dark skin tone and has some natural hair locks, this makes that character black. No, that doesn't make a character black. 
No, what makes a character black is the content of their character, and it goes beyond the color of their skin. And that's where I have the issue with Concrete Comics' Luna character. Now, the publishers at Concrete want to say that the Luna character is written by a black woman, and want to say that this is a diversity point, but the big problem with Luna is that while it, she's written by a black woman, she's not written by a black woman that promotes values that are going to elevate and edify sisters like previous Concrete comics did, such as Odina and Candy. Now, Odina and Candy were books that went out here and presented us images of black women that fit right in line with, like with Isis, with the ancient Egyptian and Nubian mythology. And some of them were directly connected to the old Heliopolitan gods. But when I look at this Luna character, I see a character that really, as I see it, just is one that promotes anti-black messaging and goes out here and promotes a lot of white supremacist narratives. Because with the Luna character, even though she is written by a black woman on the surface, the character's aesthetic is one that is one that promotes self-hatred because we have a black woman who has long blonde hair. And even worse, we have a character that in the first issue openly goes out here and disrespects black men by passing over a black man who she who was trying to court her and going out here looking to get involved with a white man and marry her. So when I look at the Luna character, the character is one that really promotes a lot of narratives I have seen from many of the BWWM books that promote swirling and again that's a shallow and superficial narrative that goes out here and ele where you have a black woman elevating white men and for a black owned publisher again it's an optically bad look for them because while you want to say you want to have diversity of thought the whole thing is there's a d better way to do this than go out here and push a comic that goes out here and promotes so-called swirling because when I read this first issue again everything was about her being getting towards that road towards that white man and making it where that white man was the center of her world whereas when I as someone who has gone out here and written interracial relationships like I wrote in Spellbound and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy I can go out here and show Jason and Muriel Crowley's relationship isn't based on just a race. No, it's based on them as people who came together, who loved each other, and that transcended race. And again, as them being in a supporting characters in the book, they were not the main focus, and this optically better fit into my catalog, because if my mission is creating positive stories about the black experience, the focus should not be on these characters, no, the focus needs to be on Matilda, who is the black daughter. That's the main focus of the Spinsterella books. So if you're a black-owned publisher, you have to really think about your optics, and you have to think about the kind of books you're publishing. Because, yes, on the surface, you've got a black woman writing a comic, but is that comic fitting into your message? That was the original points I was making in my videos regarding the criticism of Luna because the Luna character really, again, as I saw it, didn't fit into Concrete Comics' original mission, which was keeping it concrete, and it looks like this full strong structure is starting to crumble. And again, when I look at that at this Luna character, it was a book that I just it just it reeked of so much self-hatred that I've seen in many of the BWWM books I have seen much of the swirling narratives I have seen online and much of it again is stuff that I look at with a red flag and again as somebody who's gone out here and seen these types of narratives they are not narratives that are conducive to building a black owned platform as I saw it and again that was my reason for criticizing Concrete Comics and they wanted to come back to me and talk about Isis's aesthetic look but the Isis character is a character who is out here. She was 
one who was supported by black men in Nubia. She was one who did not want to get involved with any man outside of a black man when she got to America. Even though she was living in Japan, she wanted to find, she was looking for black men. And again, she didn't really want to get involved and get married with anyone unless they were a black man for, who, like her. And again, she went out here and married Joe Robinson, a black man. So she is deeply connected and has a great love for black men. And that love for black men goes on even today when she is um, out here working with characters like John Haynes. And I go in depth into Isis's issues as related to her loving black men in the upcoming Isis Dark Incubus, where we find out all of the trauma she endured after seeing her husband being lynched is one of the reasons why she isn't with a man right now, but she still loves and supports black men, but she has this issue as related to fear of a black man being taken from her, and that's why she fears getting involved with a black man. So when I wrote the character, I wrote her as a black woman who loves black men, wants to be with black men, and wants to promote black on black love. That is all core to the Isis character, and that's something I always do with all of my heroines. They are always with black men, and they always look to stand at the side of a black man, whether they be characters like when I did Cassandra Lee, when I didn't know any better and I, get, I made her this blonde-haired chef because she was an artsy type, or a character like Marilyn Marie, a washed-up black actress, she still wanted a black man, and even biracial Matilda Crowley wanted a black man because it's important for black people to see black characters looking to pick a black man first because when you see people who look like you picking you, it reflects positively on you. This is what I grew up with back in the 80s and the 90s with shows like The Cosby Show and many movies like Hollywood Shuffle and many of the Spike Lee movies outside of Jungle Fever. Yeah, I always saw black men and black women loving each other, and I wanted to reflect that in my own work. And again, it's not about light skin or dark skin because black is black, and you will find that in white supremacist America, black is black, whether you're light skin, biracial, or dark skin, you are still black, and in America, you will always be seen as black, and I always point that out in many of my books, such as the Isis series, and in books like Isis Imitation of Life. Isis is again a woman who you would say, oh, she's light-skinned, but she's the one who, even in her own town, had to deal with racism, and had to deal with racist white women in Imitation of Life, and had to deal with, again, that racist imagery. And again, I show how that has all of a psychological toll on the character, I go further in depth on race and its impact on black women and, and with Isis than you'll ever see with any of these other characters like Rocket, Vixen, Storm, or, Cap or Monica Rambeau. I, they will never really write about the impact of race on those characters and that's something that I go in depth on with the Isis character, not to the point where I'm going out here making it, oh, it's the evil white man, but I talk about the psychological impact of racism on a black character, and that is another part of what makes Isis distinct. I always try to, again, make sure that this character is one that is connected to black culture and try to show how all the struggles that black women deal with as related to having and taking their power because a lot of black women they feel powerless about their lives because they want to submit to black men they want to have relationships with black men they want to get close to black men they want to be with black men however they because they live in a system of white supremacy they fear getting close to black men because they fear that that black man will be taken from them and because they fear that that black man is take, will be taken from them, this is why a lot of sisters don't trust black men, not understanding it's the white supremacist, it's the one you, don't, you need to not trust, and you need to not trust the white supremacist because the white supremacist is the one looking to take your man away from you so that you will wind up dependent on his system. And against that fear of, of the black man not being able to meet their needs, this is what has a lot of black women scared. And I'm going to go in depth on this in Isis Dark Incubus. 
I go in on depth on this because, again, I love and care about black women, and I want black women to see that there are black men out here who love you and care about you and care about you enough to tell you the truth. And again, all of these skin tone debates are straw man talking points as related to things. And it's a really weak argument because again, wh which character has a greater impact on black people? The black character who is light skinned, who goes out here and helps black people over the years and is shown actively being a part of black life or the dark-skinned character who has the blonde hair, who rejects black men and goes out here and prefers white men over them. Critical question, I would like to ask the publishers at Concrete Comics, which one has a greater impact on black people? The black woman who has um, lighter skin and brownish hair, who, it, it, which is natural, who actively over the centuries was out here looking to help her own people, or the futuristic character with dark skin and blonde hair who actively throws up a middle finger at a black man in the pages of a comic? That's the critical question I have to ask because, again, when people want to come to me with the light skin, dark skin, straw man argument, I can deconstruct that argument with talking points that I present as related to the Isis character, and I can go into Isis's books and talk about how she has to deal with not only um, white racism, but she has to deal with intra-racism, like in books like The Beauty Myth, and I also deal in The Beauty Myth about how she has to deal with black people and their obsession with beauty standards, because the Rahima character, she's a owner of a black-owned cosmetics company inspired by Ebony Fashion Fair, but she's so obsessed with white beauty and immortality that she basically goes out here and derides Isis, as, and who was a goddess standing in front of her, telling her that there's something wrong with her. And that's a scene in the beauty myth that I really wish I could bring to comics. It's one scene that I really wish I could bring to comics because it just shows how dysfunctional black women are as related to the self-hatred that they've learned. Because with the Rahima character, I show how deep the self-hatred in black women goes as related to their obsession with beauty and looking for white acceptance and looking to try to be like a white woman to the point where they basically disfigure themselves and don't see the beauty in themselves. That's something that I really wish I could bring to a comic because when I do these stories, I really want people to think about things because I remember thinking, watching a lot of Star Trek and a lot of different types of shows like Have Gun, Will Travel, and their fantasy was more about commentaries about society, and that's what I try to do partially with Isis series books, and I also want to make commentary on black culture. So with these books, again, people will look at the aesthetics of the Isis character, but they won't really look at the substance of the character, and that's the saddest part about things. People don't know how black the Isis character is because they get caught up in, a, in, a, in colorism issues, not understanding that this character is deeply connected to ancient Egyptian and Nubian history and deeply connected to black culture here in America. And I have a couple of readers who have read these books and said, hey, it's just, this is the, the, this, you really get black culture. You really presented black culture in these books. And it's the rare readers who do get that point. But with the Isis character, again, I'm not trying to do any sort of colorism. I'm trying to show people this character, again, based in mythology and history. I'm trying to bring you this character and show you how this character is as a black woman. And again, being black isn't about light skin or dark skin. It's you are black, period. And when you are black, you have to deal with the struggles of being black. And the struggles of black women have not really been presented in comics that well. I mean, I looked at Dwayne McDuffie's icon and he did the best job so far, but even he was doing a shallow job as related to showing the struggles of black women, but in comics, and I wanted to go with the Isis character and show the struggles that black women go through as related to comics, and again, I, when I with Isis, I dug deeper than what you see with Storm, deeper than what you see with Vixen, deeper than what you see with Bumblebee, deeper than what you see with Rocket, deeper than what you see with Monica Rambeau. I really 
go into this because I have sisters and a cousin and a mother and living around black women for years and listening to them. One, one, I, the thing that really inspired me again was when I was sitting at the kitchen table and my sister sits to, says to me, why aren't there any black women heroines? And I sat there and I said to myself, yeah, there aren't that very many outside of the ones I just previously mentioned. And I went out here and I said, if I'm going to make a black heroine, then I really want to go out here and dig deep as related to black women and the struggles that they go through. And this is something that is I'm very good at because I remember writing a novel in 2013 called The Thetas, and I had black women telling me I was surprised that this book was written by a black man because the women were so real, but the women are real because they are based on women I have experienced in my life. And that's all part of what I apply to the Isis character. That's all what I apply to her character because I want little black girls to see a black heroine who looks like them, has their experiences, has their struggles. I do that with all of my books, whether they be light-skinned characters like Isis or Matilda Crowley, or brown-skinned characters like Colleen Anderson in The Thetas, or Lilith Graves in Eternal Night. I make sure that those black girls can see a black heroine who reflects them and reflects the culture that they come from. That is core to my mission as a writer. It's core to my mission as a writer. And again, this is something that the people of Concrete Comics don't understand about the Isis character. And I and I, if they don't really understand it, then I just have to just charge it to the game. But when I go out here and I create black heroines, I dig deep because I want people, black girls to see who they are. And I want them to see the world that they come from reflected in my stories. Now, if you want to pick up some of the books in the Isis series, you can find them on Amazon.com in paperback, along with my other books featuring heroines such as Esteem and Matilda Crowley, who was a part of the Spinsterella trilogy, or Lilith Graves, who was a part of the Eternal Night vampire novel. You can find all of those books featuring black heroines on the SJS Direct imprint on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you'd like to see me make more videos like this or be able to produce things like more covers for Isis series books or be able to produce the Isis graphic novel I planned for years, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Now available for the first time on Google Play, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are falling apart in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy on Google Play today.